Bad Tölz, a small, sleepy town one hour away from Munich, where Uma Guni lived between 2004 and 2011. Here, the Turkish community is very close-knit. Everybody knew him. But in his local cafes... ..the Turks seem to have lost their memories. No? You're smiling. You've heard of him. After half a day going around the town, we finally found someone who would talk to us about Uma Guni and not just anyone. Bonjour. Hello, do you know this person? Bonjour, this is Kenny. This is Robert Tulz. This is my neighbor. He was your neighbor? He wasn't a Kurdish militant. What does Grey Wolves mean? Why Grey Wolves? Except Grey Wolves isn't really like a car brand. Or if it was, it would be cars that plough into Kurds. With their emblem of the three moons and their distinctive hand gesture, the Grey Wolves are easy to recognise. They emerged in the 1960s in Turkey as the armed wing of the nation's extreme right. Known for their violence, the Grey Wolves have been increasingly active towards the Kurdish community. All with the indulgence of the Turkish regime. And it's in this movement that we find the real roots of Uma Guni. And it's not the only thing he hid from the French Kurdish community. In Germany, we make another discovery. That's the factory where Uma Guni worked. I think so. We'll try to talk to some of his former colleagues. This man was Uma Guni's colleague for five years. He's going to reveal another aspect of his personality a passion that Guni had hidden from the Kurds in villiers le bel I was no eyes to say there was when they had waffen so he lived so for over C'est vrai? Really you spoke to him about it? Yeah, they are never here selber at this. We were in the pause to some gives us. What did he say exactly? Yeah, the total verrückt danach is er hat uh Einmal hat er sich da reingeschlichen, um das Geräusch zu hören von den Kugeln, wie sich das anfühlt. Did he ever say where this shooting range was? Vielleicht ist er, war nicht so offiziell, vielleicht war das nicht. Weil in einem Schießstand zu gehen, muss man Waffen scheinen und alles haben. Und er hat das, glaube ich, nicht gehabt. Hat alles illegal gemacht. Das ist hier die Wahrheit, okay? Bitte, trotzdem ist es okay? Freundlich, bitte schön. The interview is interrupted again. You'd think that Uma Guni is a taboo subject. Leaving Germany, one thing is sure. The image that he gave to the Kurdish community in France is the total opposite of who he really was. So why this double dealing? Why did this gun lover with a Turkish nationalistic background spend nearly two years playing the Kurdish activist? For the community who are exiled in France, this double dealing is the work of a professional. And every Wednesday for three years, they state this loud and clear in front of the crime scene. For them, Umar Gurney wasn't just a murderer, but a Turkish secret service agent who infiltrated their community. Mm -hmm. 
la France sait qui c'est, nous savons qui c'est. Quelqu'un a été euh, donc capturé depuis euh, cet attentat, mais on sait très bien que derrière cet homme-là qui a fait ça se cache la Turquie. Turkey, or more precisely MIT, the Turkish Secret Service, a much feared institution the Turkish equivalent of the CIA. In the period following the crime, several troubling clues pointed to Umar Guni having links with the Turkish secret services. Firstly, an email sent by a mysterious individual to the police headquarters in Paris only 11 days after the murders. the police have not identified who wrote this email accusing the Turkish secret service. But a few days after it was received, a new witness corroborates the idea that Umar Guni was a Turkish secret agent. The testimony of Murat Sahin. Three weeks after the crime, this man told a Kurdish newspaper that Guni definitely had links with the MIT. And he knows what he's talking about. He's a former Turkish agent. A refugee in Switzerland, he agreed to meet us. And that's how we find ourselves on this fine morning in Zurich Station. Without knowing the place or the time of our meeting. Our only means of contact being the phone number of the ex-Turkish agent's father. I've just received a new message. It's a new contact number for Murat Shahin's father. He's very careful. Yes, hello. It's Sylvain Louvet from Canal Plus. Hello. I'm calling to find out how we can find each other. You don't want to give me the address? The ex-secret agent's father joins us on the parking lot somewhere in Zurich. It's as if we're in a spy film. Sylvain, hello, how are you? Ah, you don't want us to film you? D'accord, d'accord. It's dangerous. Wary, we've finished the journey in his car. It's only once we're in the presence of his son that we're allowed to turn the cameras back on. Bonjour. Hello. Hello. Murat Shahin was an MIT agent for nearly five years. He has officially stopped all spying activities. Mit weiß alles. Mit ist sogar für mich ist mit stärker als Mossad oder mit CIA. Mit ist arbeitet wirklich sehr gut. Sie wissen alles. After the murders, when Umar Guni is identified as the prime suspect, a photo of him goes around the world on the internet. Murad Shahin recognizes him straight away. Two years before, one of his superiors had showed him exactly the same photo in Turkey. And you, Murat, uh, what are your thoughts? Was Umar Guni an MIT agent or not? Das ist kein Journalist, das ist kein Restaurant, ich bin Chef, du musst. Nein, das ist anders. Meine Gefühl, meine Gedanke, mm. ich glaube, er hat nicht direkt Kontakt mit mir. Ich glaube, er kontakt andere Person, diese Person kontakt mit. Ich denke. Why did you agree to meet us today? Ja, ich habe akzeptiert, weil. Äh, Ich wollte, dass sie eben jeder weiß, was dahinter steckt. Ja, auf diese Attentat oder 
in plain English, for this former agent, Guni was certainly linked to the Turkish secret service. Besides these secrets, there is also material proof. Notably, the contents of Guni's telephones that were seized by the French police. In Turkey in 2014, a journalist who is now a member of parliament called directory assistance to find out who Umo Guni's phone contacts belong to. And bingo! The operator revealed that one of the numbers belonged to the Turkish Secret Service. And to prove it to us, he called directory assistance again in front of us. Sıfır dört yüz kırk iki. Sıfır dört yüz kırk iki. On iki sıfır dokuz. On iki sıfır dokuz. Evet, şu an bu numara Erzurum Milli İstihbarat Teşkilatı olarak kayıt çıkıyor. Tamam, tamam. Teşekkür Bilmiyorum ediyorum. Bilmiyorum, ben şirketimiz tarifim sizden önce etlendirecek. Numarayı görüşmek ister misiniz? Yok, sağ olasın. Teşekkür ediyorum. Sağ olasın, teşekkür ederiz. Sağ ol. Sağ so. ol. MIT Erzurum. Erzurum in the north of the country, a key site for the Turkish secret services. Were we surprised that that goes to Erzurum? That it reached Erzurum. Erzurum, e, biraz daha operasyonel bir alandır. Bütün kontrgerilla faaliyetleri e, Erzurum merkezi örgütlenmiştir. E, sembolik bir merkez olabilir. E, Ömer Güney'in muhtemelen geçmişte irtibat kurduğu birileri. As we followed our investigation, another number attracted our attention, that of Chevdet Ergen. In Ankara, Chevdet Ergen was the right-hand man of the Guni family. He carried out all administrative tasks for Irma's parents. It's to Chevdet's address that the new passport of the prime suspect was supposed to be delivered. On this little piece of paper found in Guni's belongings, he had even named Chevdet as the person to contact in case of a medical emergency. The French police had never heard of this mysterious Chevdet Ergen. We got hold of these telephone statements, which proved that in the month preceding the triple murder in Paris, he called the Turkish Secret Service in Ezerum around a hundred times. We showed these telephone statements to our Turkish politician and visibly, given his reaction, he wasn't aware of them. It's very important. It's very important and you should keep them. Mite doğrudan temas kurarlarsa kendilerini fişlemiş olurlar. For him, these telephone statements are a proof that the Turkish secret services are behind the murder of the three Kurdish militants. No one can call MIT in Turkey. If you call to MIT and if you tell that uh, I am a person, I'm a member of Turkey, I want to speak with someone, they will never give you answer. If you are talking with MIT, I saw that they are speaking uh, more than uh, 10 minutes. Uh, that means they are working with MIT. They are a member of MIT. You have to be careful. Uh, also, they are very important. I saw them. It's, it's very important. Okay. Okay. Of course, we would have liked to hear Chevdet Ergen tell us his role in the events, but he's since passed away from cancer. Other clues found by the French police in Guni's telephone show that he was indeed a spy. During the two years he spent in the heart of the Kurdish community, he took photographs with his telephone and sent these to a mysterious correspondent. For example, less than 24 hours before the assassination of the three Kurdish militants towards midnight, Irma Guni goes into the office of the president of the Kurdish Cultural Association in villiers le -Bel. He photographs and sends the files of 329 members of the organization. And this isn't the only act of spying he carried out. 
Other documents were also sent, like these notes on the Kurdish organization's financing. Real secret agent activity uncovered by the French investigators. 